and we are live. Hey, Mitchu, how are you today? I'm great. It feels like it's been a small eternity since I've last been on this show. How are things yeah, with when you? Was, when was the last? It's been a little while. It's great to have you back on the live show, man. I don't know. It's got to be like probably at least six months at this point. Yeah, well, you're Seems overdue, like so Absolutely. you've been Mr. Webinar recently, so it's, it's nice to see nice to see you on the calm and casual and cool Live at Epifan show again. Yeah. So hi, everybody, those I haven't seen forever, and for those that are just meeting me for the first time, my name's uh, Matsur. I'm a kind of senior support specialist uh, with the company. Yeah. Um, anybody in chat? Everybody? Linda? I see Linda here. No George hey, today, Linda. Linda. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint He's, Hopefully in the near future. A, he's got a little baby he's taking care of, so. <laughs> yeah. At some point or um, yeah. another, we'll see him. Yeah, so uh, great to have everybody here today. We're going to keep this episode pretty short and sweet. Uh, we got a few really neat things to talk about. I think the first mm-hmm. and biggest thing that we wanted to mention is uh, we're heading to NAB. Yeah! Uh, NAB, NAB starts on Sunday. Yeah! <laughs> Everyone likes a weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> a little different, right? Starting on a Sunday. But... Yeah, uh, for Epifan, this is a big deal because we've been a couple years off of NAB due to all the pandemic stuff. So it's we're really excited to be back. Um, we are going to be actually. I think I even have a little graphic here. Look at this. Uh, boo boo boo. Let me zoom in. Okay, producers, can we see this? Welcome to fabulous. Oh, I'll zoom in even more. Um, we will be in fabulous las vegas nevada and uh, you can find us in central hall booth 9917 Mm -hmm. and we've got some pretty cool stuff we're going to be showing off maybe we'll talk about some of it a little later in the show Um, we do also have a promo code here if you want to grab yourself some tickets you can register for nab and use promo code lv2343 and that will get you into the show for free so Come, come hang out. Come see us at the booth. We'd love to see anyone who is uh, going to be at NAB this year. Um, yeah, please check it out. Come say hi. You know, stop in just to catch up. If we haven't seen you in a little while, if you're new to the you know to the brand and you want to learn a little bit more about us, please don't hesitate to ask every question under the sun. Yeah, we're we're gonna have the social media going too, so we'll try to report back from the show on a daily basis, any cool things we see as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of cool things that we're looking forward to seeing at NAB, Matt, you were telling me about this new DJI microphone. Uh, Yeah, so- It really perked my ears up. Can you you tell me about this? Yeah, absolutely. So I originally, uh, you know, was researching the the Rode Go 2 microphones and, you know, trying to keep up with tech is always really important, especially in the context of audio, which is kind of like my little go to uh, kind of obsession here. I came across this uh, kind of DJI wireless microphone system. So this is a little bit new compared to you know some of the other devices that are out there. So probably first and foremost, which you can probably see from this image, is these are wireless chargeable microphones or transmitters, and they each have independently about five and a half hours of, of charge that's available when you're using them. And the receiver itself also has about a five hour charge on that one. The cool thing about it is that it's got a portable charging case that also charges the receiver and the transmitter. And you can charge, I think, all of the devices uh, up to twice, depending on how extensive the use is. And both the transmitter and the receiver and the charging case are all USB-C, which makes it really easy for charging compatibility across the board. So that's the first thing I got right off the top. Something else that's a little bit different and a little bit more uh, intuitive and user-friendly, in my opinion, is it's got a built-in kind of front-facing touchscreen. So if you want to put this on a shoehorn, on your camera, um, you can either make it face backwards from the camera if you're going to be an operator behind the scenes, or in front of the camera if you're more in kind of a vlog format where you might be wanting to see your levels in real time just as a point of reference. So that makes it really cool. The other thing is no additional apps are required for functionality. You can do it directly from the touchscreen of the device using little swipes and presses to be able to access the dis- different systems and network, or sorry, system and you know settings related. So if you want to adjust gain or add a specific effect, you can do that directly from the receiver itself. So that's really cool. Now, I don't know about you, Dan, but I like to walk around at trade shows and if I'm doing this sort of productions, and especially if you find yourself on like a larger stage or, or area where you might be doing a production, I gotta like I gotta say I really love the range on these because they can actually go 
up to 250 meters of distance between the transmitter and the receiver. Holy for those of you that are working, 50 meters. Yeah. So, so for you guys who work in Imperial out there, it's about 0.15 miles of distance that you can actually cover with the transmitter and the receiver. That is phenomenal. So um, a couple, a couple of other tidbits I got to mention right off the bat too. Let's say you go out of range of that transmitter. There's a backup recording option on the transmitter itself. So you can do a local record on the microphone transmitter itself for up to eight gigabytes of recording space. So that's kind of amazing. Oh, wow. So you could even, you know, have your scratch audio ready to go, you know, port that over quickly before you, you know, if you, depending on your workflow, I guess, but it's always good to have a backup too, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe your audio settings on your camera weren't quite correct. You know, you've got the confidence that your mic system has has you covered. Now to add on top of that is an extra layer of safety and precaution, especially if you're gonna be doing productions either on site somewhere or as a remote production capability. They also have a feature called safety track on the DJI wireless system. And what this does is provides two separate audio track duplicated, except the safety track is six decibels lower. So especially if you're in an environment where you might be going from a quiet area to a loud area where you might, you know, overhead all of your audio to get it all like crunchy and uh, overloaded, you'll be able to have that backup track or that safety track that you can go back and reference and be able to adjust and adapt accordingly. So for post-production capabilities, that's amazing. Matt, I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, is, this is cool. I was not expecting to see a microphone system like this from DJI. Um, mm -hmm. This is really cool. And I saw it here. I was at the bottom here. I was like, price. Uh, it says 329 US, which is like, yes. that's very competitive price. Now, it was originally announced in late 2021 and started going out to reviewers. Uh, and I believe there are, they have some initial batches that have been released. But right now, there's basically a wait list or reservation that you can do so that once like kind of like uh, the floodgates open to being able to buy them, you'll be able to go ahead and do that. So I would recommend if you're interested to definitely throw your name down because I don't know about you guys, but they're going to go really fast because I want them. Give me like six or seven of them. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. This case is just a brilliant idea because it, it actually reminds me of like, this is the case I have for my earbuds, right? Mm -hmm. So they've definitely, I think, maybe taken some inspiration from, you know, the AirPods to have everything kind of compact and just fit into one convenient little charging case. Absolutely. And it's also compatible with other devices as well. So when we think about receivers, obviously you'll have things like the 3.5 millimeter connection that you're allowed to do it as like a microphone input to your, you know, your DSLR, your mirrorless camera, or your, your camera that you're looking to capture from. But it also has both a USB-C connector option and a lightning uh, port connector option. So if you want to connect it to your smartphone, um, or your tablet as your audio capture source, you'll be able to do that as well. Fantastic. Um, super cool. Thanks for sharing that, Matt. Yeah, with um, pleasure. Um, while you were on the topic of, you know, emerging wireless audio mm -hmm. solutions, I was taking a look at, okay, how do we do wireless video? And I like to check on on this from time to time. Um, and one of the companies I always like to keep an eye on is, is Teradek. Because they do yes. really, they've always kind of led the way in, in, in wireless video solutions. And uh, this is what they're, one of the things that they're promoting heavily for uh, NAB this year. And I think this came out maybe end of 2021. And this is the Spark 4K um, um, video transmitter receiver system. And what this does is it mounts right on top of your camera. Mm -hmm. um, very compact, can fit on like a, sh uh, a shoe mount, and it's going to send your 4K HDR video signal with zero, almost no latency to your production system and, and wherever that may be. That's um, really cool. Just the form factor here, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. Like the Teradex used to be this big bulky unit that you would like put on, um, on like the gold mount on the back of your camera. Your beta yep, cam, I remember those. <laughs> you know, a big, heavy, blocky thing that required, you know, a D tap for your battery power, and you know, it's just it's getting more and more compact and and less wires and 
looks like they even have an app so you can like monitor the quality of your stream. Um, so I just thought this was really cool. I want to check this out while we're at NAB. Um, I was looking into the s specs here and what did it say? It was like, well, first of all, I think just 4K is already impressive in its own right when it mm -hmm. comes to wireless. Like okay, 500 feet with zero delay. So they're saying no latency, 500 feet, 4K HDR video. Um, to me, the possibilities that that unlocks are, are, are pretty cool. I mean, pair that with something like the DJI, DJI mic that you just shared. Um, and all of a sudden you can roam around an event space. You can have maybe multiple cameras within an event space yeah. in and amongst Different the audience floors. or, you know, cruising around the stage or what have you. Um, I just thought this was super cool and I love seeing when you take existing technology and you fit it into a smaller, you know, easier to use package. So, um, yeah, we might need to get some of these so that we can go mobile on our live show sometime. This is just, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And if some of you guys out there have uh, some suggestions or, you know, some tech that we should be looking at, especially for our own productions or just to see if we can optimize and work better with some of our solutions, we definitely want to hear about it. So definitely, you know, drop a comment there or send us an email just at info at epifan.com. We want to hear more. We want to be able to provide more content for you guys and obviously making sure that we're still all on the same page and staying ahead of the curve. Yeah. Awesome. I do see uh nick Oder in chat this must have come in while we were talking about dji he said it's a one month waiting list Mitchu, to uh that's actually not to, terrible to get your hands on the dji so that's not, not so terrible. bad when you figure like you have to wait a year to get a car now and you have to everything is a waiting list now it seems like but uh yeah we i guess a month can. is not so bad um wanted to share something else this is um so our friends over at ptz optics always have a few bundles ready to go when it comes to NAB timeframe, and they are bundling their new Simple Track Light um, AI tracking camera with the, our very own Pearl Nano. So th there's a little video here explaining some of that. Maybe we'll just uh, maybe we'll just play back this video and uh, see what this is all about. Recording videos and capturing lectures should be easy for any organization that uses video as an education. quality for your well, videos. Epifan Pearl Nano is a compact video recording and lecture capture device that integrates directly with Panopto, Kaltura, and Yuja. The system's refined yet powerful feature set offers a tailored, user-friendly lecture recording experience. Using Pearl Nano's intuitive custom layout... Yeah, I'm going to pause it right there because I'm being told that the audio isn't isn't going anymore. We're, sorry we're about back. That. We just had forgot to add it to the full screen. Oh, layout. sorry it's about back. that. Okay, we'll pick this. We'll pick this up. We just didn't have the audio turned on on our layout. We'll uh, we'll pick this back up where we left off. User friendly lecture recording experience. Using Pearl Nano's intuitive custom layout designer, you can easily create a dynamic layout for your recordings that combines multiple video and audio sources. For this example, the Simple Track Light has been connected to Pearl Nano's SDI input, and the instructor's laptop has been connected to the HDMI input. Pearl Nano is then able to create a picture-in-picture -picture layout for lectures being captured and sent to the learning management system. Pearl Nano is also able to output an HDMI video feed to power a local confidence monitor for the instructor to view during presentations. And with its HDMI pass-through, the system can display a presentation or other video on another in-room monitor with zero latency. The instructor likes to schedule all of their recordings through the learning management systems because Pearl can integrate directly with Panopto, Kaltura, or Yuja, the teacher doesn't need to do any custom configurations or setup. Pearl Nano and other Pearl systems make it super easy to maintain working lecture capture systems with minimal end user training or technical expertise. Note, if you're interested in creating multiple layouts or uploading separate recordings to a content management system, 
we recommend looking into Perl Mini or Perl 2 for your lecture capture needs. The HuddleCam HD Simple Track Lite is always ready to track the teacher automatically, so there is no need for a camera operator. Students can easily read information written on a whiteboard and stay informed with teacher presentations and other content. At the end of each class, the video is automatically made available on the Classroom Learning Management System. It's that easy. To learn more about the Simple Track Lite and Epifan Pearl family of products, click the links below. You can also email partners at huddlecamhd.com to schedule a demo of the Simple Track Lite. So there you go, a uh, nice combination. Huddlecam, Simple Track Lite. I always like seeing what kind of tracking cameras are out there. The thing I like about these cameras is like, you know, they're pair it with something like a Pearl Nano, you've got pretty much all you need minus audio to be able to capture really great classroom or presentations or anything where you might have someone in front of an audience or, uh, and it just makes it a really kind of seamless production experience. You don't set it and forget it. You don't need someone there operating the camera or using a joystick to, to control the PTZ cam. So, um, just nice to see. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, a couple other things we wanted to share today. Um, we do have some news. Should we, do we have our in the kitchen? Should we go to the kitchen? Uh, I don't know. I kind of want to talk about just really quickly, even if it's just a side point, a little bit of our ground control to Major Tom article that we kind of came across a little bit. Uh, because we did have a little bit of uh, our, our thumbnail kind of showcasing this a little bit. Oh, so right, some right, of you. Right may have kind of seen, uh, they're talking about starting to use uh, kind of virtual reality and holograms uh, for kind of medical and psychiatric reason, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, conferences and such on the International Space Station. So it's a really fun article that we de definitely recommend kind of checking out. Um, the gist of this is, is that uh, they're now starting to use VR, although it's not a new technology, it's been around for a little while, to start including them for things like uh, medical conferences, psychiatric conferences, being able to have VIP sessions, and obviously, you know, face-to-faces with families. So it's a new way of being able to immerse both the astronauts and the like orbital, Earth orbital staff and, and folks basically in a more uh, cohesive type environment. So if you can imagine this as an example, Dan, let's say you have a, a, a professional that designs some of the equipment that's going to be found on that International Space Station using VR, you can basically put them right beside the astronaut in place while they're actively working on it to provide you know additional coaching and guidance as to how you might want to leverage this particular uh you know uh, experiment or this particular solution for that type of application it's very very cool this is just further proof that we're living in the future i mean uh everything when, when moves. i was a kid if you'd have told me that we'd be beaming holograms into space i wouldn't have believed you <laughs> that is fair yeah but yeah and so guys the definitely reference check it out. point i have there is the what is it on the Millennium Falcon, that like, what is that chessboard thing where they've got Oh, that's the... super cool. <laughs> yeah. I think someone actually this... created that recently. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, at some point, right? Look at this. That's that's really cool. So does the astronaut wear VR goggles then? Is that the idea here? And it's more of like uh, an augmented reality experience? Or how does this... I, so, yeah. So at the moment, it's, it's kind of like a one directional thing. So they're sending all of the VR elements from Earth over to the International Space Station and the astronauts are able to consume that via HoloLens. But in the future, they're planning on doing kind of like a, a two way communication version where both that information is going to be sent from the International Space Station down to Earth and back. So it's going to be able to give a lot more. Now, the cool thing or like probably the biggest consideration is that we're also, you know, traversing a significant amount of space right from from ground to the iss not to mention speeds we're talking what like 17 and a half thousand kilometers per hour that you know all this information has to travel on top of earth's orbit so very cool but very crazy yeah it's magic that's that's how it works it's magic even though it's not i wonder what the bit rate like, like what bit rate of video could you get to and from the international space station i'd just be curious like what good question what is possible you know um yeah let us know in chat what do you think what is the bit rate of video streamed in and out of the international space station i don't know maybe we could find out 
Very cool. Thanks for sharing that, Matthew. Um, Want to share just a couple happenings around Epifan. If we do have a graphic for in the kitchen, let's let's roll graphic. Jeremy, hit that stream deck button for us. There we go. In the kitchen. Um, little bit of news if you missed it. Uh, April 13th, very exciting feature release for Pearl Nano. You can now encode H.265 HEVC video on Pearl Nano. Mm -hmm. And that is free. Very cool. That, that has been added to your Pearl Nano. So make sure to download your 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 416 firmware update. You can do it right in the admin panel. Um, the other thing that came to Pearl Nano is uh, the 4K add-on. So this is an optional add-on. If you need it, um, you can purchase this feature. It basically enables 4K camera inputs and 4K encoding on your Nano. So, I mean, that is to me just very impressive, especially considering the form factor of this device, it just keeps getting better. Um, so a really nice option, especially, hey, maybe you want to uh, stream 4K out of an event space with lower bandwidth capabilities. Well, H.265 can help you do that. It effectively cuts your bit rate in half. In half, um, yeah. So, or not your bit rate, but rather your, well, I guess, yeah, it does cut your effectively required bit rate, bit rate yeah. in half. Yeah. So now I will just, say this though, if you want to stream that content, HEVC is not supported on RTMP. I know that we hear a lot of people talking about H.265 and HEVC being the next encoding format, but RTMP is not supported with HEVC. So if you're looking to stream over to YouTube or to Wowza or some of these other platforms, you have to consider using either SRT or HLS. I do Super have important. a very, very good note. And I do have a graphic here that kind of outline some of the CDNs. So if you are planning to use H.265 to your CDN, there's there's a list of some that we know work, but with that caveat note, not compatible with RTMP. So you're going to have to use SRT in the case of Wowza or like HLS in the case of YouTube. But that's just very cool. Um, we do have a couple other little tidbits to share. Um, there's a new, new blog, blog don't we? post. Yeah. There's always a new blog post. Simulcasting, what it is and how it works. This is a nice blog post from Michael Manette. Hey, why why stream to just one CDN when you could stream to a whole bunch at the same time? Mm -hmm. Reach your audience wherever they are instead of making them come to you. So uh, just a bunch of ideas here about why simulcasting is like, you know, we also hear the term multi-streaming being used as well. That's true, that's um, true. But some, some tips here to really you know, get the mo if you're going to go to the effort of creating content, you know, get it onto a couple different platforms. That's what we do here on our live shows. We stream to YouTube and Facebook. I think we used to multicast to like simulcast to Twitch and we did used to. Yeah. Uh, I think we've done LinkedIn and a couple different, uh, did we do ever do, what was the Microsoft streaming platform? What was that called again? Um, that, that ended we're talking Microsoft's about just Microsoft of teams? Twitch. team lives. No, I I'm trying to blank. This. Guys, if you remember this, please let us know. <laughs> it was called... Uh, uh, I mean, this is where we need that Jeopardy I, music. Yeah, I can't remember what it was called. Microsoft used to have their own version of Twitch. Uh, but it... Mixer. That's it. Mix, Mixer. It Mixer. Mixer. Yes. Um, so we did stream this show to Mixer at one point, too. Uh, but yeah, obviously but Mixer doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. Know your audiences, pick your platforms. It doesn't mean you need to stream to every platform under the sun. If one works better for you than the other, then obviously stick with that. Uh, so definitely a really cool blog worth checking out. So definitely get your hands on, or get your eyes on that, I should say. It's kind of hard to get your hands on a blog. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, do see a question coming in on chat. Okay, so Linda, bitrate from the ISS, that made me laugh. Hard is funding a wrench in my mini purse. Hard is, find, I guess, fund, finding a wrench in my mini purse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting video into outer space and back, probably not the easiest thing to do. So thank you to all the genius engineers who make that possible. Mm -hmm. um, Sonoga is asking, will Pearl 2 have H.265? Uh, Sonoga, I know that's something we're looking into. Mm -hmm. um, it's a capability that is definitely well suited for Pearl Nano being our newest device. Um, currently, no official notifications that we can provide about it coming to Pearl 2, but I can tell you that as with many other things that our audience requests, we are looking into it. So stay tuned and you know, we maybe we'll have something for you in the future. Um, anything else? Oh, I, something else I wanted to bring up. 
I'm going to keep pumping the tires on this because it's super cool. This is uh, Evolution Magazine by Epifan Video. This is our fifth edition, volume five. And uh, speaking of outer space, I guess we really like space because we're always making references. But uh, Cloud Production, are you on board? Um, cloud Production is definitely a trend we're keeping an eye on. And, and in fact, we'll have some things to share related to Cloud Production at NAB. Um, so stay tuned for that. We'll have some more information soon. But this uh, magazine's free. You can get your copy right here at epifan.com slash magazine. And uh, there's a bunch of cool case studies in here. There's a bunch of really smart ideas about how to scale up your production using the power of cloud. Mm -hmm. And cool. um, yeah, if that interests you, this magazine is, is definitely for you. You can also, I think you can request a hard copy as well, but... You know, the digital edition is, is probably the quickest and easiest way to get all that great content. So, ebbafan.com slash magazine. Now, on the subject of H.265 and HEVC, I believe that we're also going to be covering a little bit of that in an upcoming webinar. You are right. So, and will you be oh, on that webinar? It's a good question. Know. Probably. Let's make, sure, let's make sure you are. I'd love to get your take on this because H.265, I mean, we touched on it a bit today, but okay, how do, how do you apply it to your workflow? How do you get the most out of this capability? Um, well, yeah. I could answer what? that for you now, but why don't we wait for the actual webinar to do that? Yeah, I think there's a bit more to it than just like a five second answer, but you know, if you want to dive deep into H.265 and HEVC, oh, it looks like we've got one expert horse, horse, one expert host, <laughs> George Herbert, but uh, maybe maybe we need a co-host too. So we'll, we'll recruit you as well, Matthew. Um, I'll see what I can do. I'll awesome. check my very busy schedule. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's leave it at that because we got to run. We got to get going to NAB. I'm flying out very in the wee hours tomorrow morning and uh, look it's forward true, to yeah. seeing any uh, any of our friends who will be there. Um, and Matthew, I know you'll be tuned in from afar. I will be indeed. Uh, but uh, you'll be there in spirit. <laughs> For everyone joining us today, thank you so much for coming in and for spending the time with us. We really appreciate it. And yeah, we'll I see guess. you on, we'll be back on May 5th. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see you all then. And until then, take care. So long.